Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. I thank the Lord for the Apostolic Church Choir. I don't know any other churches. I've only been to this church. I hear that some other churches don't have a choir no more. I thank the Lord for our choir. It is a blessing to sing praises unto the Lord. It's time now for the Word of God. And it is my pleasure to have this opportunity to introduce to you our pastor. He's the watchman of our souls. He tells us just what we need when we need it. Pastor Dorian Richardson, please welcome him with Preach the Word as he comes. Preach the Word. Amen. Bless God today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God for the good shepherd. Amen. Jesus Christ, who gives us what we need right at the right time. Can the church say amen? Amen. We're just so glad that we are all here in the house of God once again um, to magnify and to worship God. I would be amiss, amen, before I uh, deliver this discourse today, not to allow our friend, our brother, uh, Elder Shivers, to come and give us a few words. Praise God in his own way. Let us greet him today with an a, a hearty praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continue to be in my mouth. You know, giving honor to God, who is the head of my life, and giving honor to uh, Pastor Julian Emer Emeritus, giving honor to uh, Elder, and giving honor to my great friend, who used to preach on the street corners, down in, in uh, all over Grand Rapids, Pastor Dorian Richardson. Amen. We had a good time out there in the street. One time I was preaching on the street and, and Doran came and told me that the police said he was going to take me to jail if I didn't stop preaching. I only had five minutes to go. If I had about a half an hour, I went to jail because I would have kept on preaching the gospel. Amen. I just want to thank and praise the Lord, you know, for thank the Lord, thank and praise the Lord for this church, for Apostolic Faith Church, where I came and was a member for almost five years, sat under the great leadership of Pastor Julian, I mean, Elder Julian and First Lady and First Lady Julian at the time. I just thank and praise the Lord. God has been good to me. He's a good God. God saved me 31 years ago. You know, he saved me 31 years ago. I was on my way to prison, but God saved me, filled me with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, turned my life around, gave me joy, gave me peace. Amen. I have peace that passes all understanding. And I just thank and praise the Lord for his goodness, and I desire that you keep me in your prayers. My son, Jacob, is starting college, uh, and we're moving him into his dorm room Monday, so pray for him. Pray for my children, Jacob, Gabriel, and Cicely, that the Lord might keep them and bless them. God bless you. Amen. Thank God for our friend. Amen, Elder Shivers. He has been a good friend to me down through the years. Amen. And he is doing uh, certainly uh, good, great things, uh, great, good preacher. Amen. And we're just glad to have him back in the house of God today. Can the church say amen? amen. And it's glad to see all of us who have come out today to uh, worship God and to praise and to magnify the God that we, amen, we serve today and has given us, as one writer said, richly, all things to enjoy. Uh, and it is just a privilege, especially in the time that we live in, where there seems to be a a, a downturn from um, people recognizing and willing to respect and reverence the things of God. It is just wonderful to be able to come to a safe haven, a shelter, for the Bible said, he shall be as it were a hiding place, amen, from the wind. And certainly that hiding place is in Christ Jesus. Can the church say amen? amen. He is a hiding place of hiding places. And it's going to come a time when everyone is going to have to recognize um, the great majesty and the power that is in Jesus Christ and that which he wants to give all of us. And it is evident that you have that same sentiment because you are here in the house of God uh, to hear the word of God and God speaks, speaks uh, to us and as it were, give us what we need. 
And I'm just so glad that as um, Elder Shivers so eloquently said that one day he filled me with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And actually what he did, he gave you a piece of himself. The Bible said that we have an earnest of our inheritance in as much as God has come into our life and he has made our quality of life so much better. Praise God. He has helped us to see his love for us. And if anybody has not had that experience, amen, my admonishment to you is that he loves you. And that that is the greatest experience that any man could ever have. And it is the reason why we are here in the church today, amen, able to do what we do because of what he has done. Thank you. And the love that he has for all of us. Amen. So I'm going to draw, I want you to um, go into the word of God today with me. We're going to go to one place today in your hearing. We'll go to the book of Matthew, chapters number 22. Praise God. And we want verses, so, somewhat of a lengthy reading today, but I'll try to expedite it as fast as possible. We want verses numbers 1 through 14. Can the church say amen? Verses numbers 1 through 14 in your hearing. And it reads as follows. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding and they would not come and again he said again he sent forth other servants saying tell them which are bidden behold I have prepared my my dinner and my ox and my fatlings are killed and all things are ready come into the marriage but they made light of it and went, and, uh, and went their way and one um, to his farm and another to his merchandise. And the, and the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth and sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burn up their cities. And then he said unto the servants, the wedding is ready, but they which are bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways and as many as ye shall find, bid them to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both, good, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And, and when the king came to see the guests, he saw a man which had not on a wedding garment, and he saith unto him, Friend, how cometh thou hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then saith the king of the servants, Bind him hand and foot, take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Verse number 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, my God, for your goodness, Lord, for your word that you've given us. Father, for you are great, Lord, and you are worthy to be praised. High and holy, Lord. Meek and lowly art thou, Lord. Speak, O oh God, to us. Give us what we need. Hallelujah. Deal with somebody's heart. Help, help somebody to see. Hallelujah. Their need for you that you might be glorified in their life. And we give you all the praise and all the honor. And let the church say in Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. Praise the Lord today. I want to speak to you uh, from this particular thought. 
Lord, choose me. Our thought today is primarily coming from the 14th verse of this particular chapter. Can the church say amen? Lord, choose me. You notice here he says, for many are called, few are chosen. Many are called. The cry has went out. The plea, as it were, has been made. The invitation, praise God, to come into the marriage is being made. God, as it were, saints, is revealing to us something that I believe is the most important thing a man in his eternal plan. This particular parable, this story that he has given us, saints of God, is in actuality. It is the totality of of God's will for man. Inasmuch as we see in this particular parable of the marriage of the king's son, a deep and powerful revelation of God's plan for time. And what we many people have not recognized or understood the only reason why God has designed creation as he has is because God wanted praise God someone to be with him in this parable saints we see the fact that God in eternity, past, inasmuch as he was alone, there was no one there. The Bible said he's God and God alone, that he created all things by himself. But I believe that God, inasmuch as him being by himself, and all of us can relate to this thought that I'm going to give you. And as much as God was in eternity by himself, God in eternity decided that he did not want to be alone. Therefore, he designed within his plan that he would have, praise God, someone to share in his bounty. To share in, as it were, his glory. And so we have, saints of God, this parable. This story that is conveying a deep truth of God's eternal plan to have someone for himself. Each and every one of us in here, if we would be honest with ourselves, many of us have longed for that relationship to have someone that we can say is our own, that we can identify with, that we can have a closeness, a kinship with. Can the church say amen? So when we read this story, we see God's eternal purpose. We see God's eternal plan. Praise God in as much as he did not want to be alone. Praise God, he reveals to us in these 14 verses. Praise God, his whole eternal 50,000 year plan for time. And that was, saints, that he would create, praise God, a place that he would be able to cultivate. Praise God, to groom, to work upon, to bring to pass someone for himself. Amen. Somebody that has been clothed, praise God, with his 
righteousness. Someone that a man has took upon, took in upon themselves who he is. Amen. They have identified with him. In fact, the Bible even tells us in the book of Ephesians, chapters number one, verses four. Praise God that we were chosen in him. Amen. Before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy, that we should be blameless. Amen. Can the church shout hallelujah? And it is in this, thank God, particular uh, parable that we see that plan. Praise God. And as much as the king of glory, amen, the Lord, as one writer said, that is strong and mighty, amen, the creator of all the ends of the universe, amen, wanted to prepare, praise God. How can I say it? He wanted to prepare, amen, someone a man that he, hallelujah, could identify with. Someone that could be his in his alone. And I want you to know, a man that reveals to us something that is so powerful. Because God, saints, has always designed, a man, hallelujah, that those that would be his, praise God, would be his in his alone. Can the church say hallelujah? Amen. So you will see God. Amen. Building, hallelujah, some similarities even in the way in which we think in our own life. Amen. That when we grow up and we decide that we want to go out, we want to praise God, have somebody for ourselves. Amen. Most of us, if we are thinking in the proper line or the proper vein of thought, we don't want that one that is supposed to be for us. Praise God, as it were, to be given to somebody else. In the church, church of hallelujah. Amen. So here we see, praise God, in this particular parable is the fact, amen, that God was preparing, amen, hallelujah, a marriage for his son. Praise God. God was preparing a marriage, amen. He was preparing an arrangement, amen, to get what he always wanted. We have to understand as we begin to examine, amen, as it were, this particular parable if we walk through time you will understand amen God as it were amen when a man when he first created man he created man for himself he created man so a man could be praise God in kinship in union with himself praise God in as much as when Adam was made the Bible said Adam was made as it were perfect he was not made, as it were, with any imperfections, amen, inasmuch as he was supposed to, as, how can I say it, he was supposed to exemplify, amen, the perfection of God. He was made, hallelujah, exactly the way God wanted him to be. Can the church shout hallelujah? But we, but we find the fact that because of something in a man, he, call, he calls something within him, calls him to reach out. For that which God did not want. And then we find saints of God. Amen. The man falling into transgression. But I want you to know God always in the back of his mind. Wanted and understood what his plan was. What his design was. So the Bible tells us God as it were begin to deal with man. He began to try to get men to see as it were his love for them. And how much he cared for them. And I want you to know as we examine this particular text, uh, because we got to walk through this from, from point A to point B, you will find saints of God from the time that a man fell into transgression, you will see God coming countless time and time again, amen, trying to get men to see, thank God, the error of their ways to it came to a point where the Bible said God saw man by the name of Abraham. And the Bible said God made promises to him, approximately seven of them, amen, hallelujah, that he made to this man by the name of Abraham. And somebody say, well, pastor, why does God, is God dealing with men like this? Is because in this parable, God had a plan, amen, and in God's plan, he wanted to have somebody for himself. The church shout hallelujah, 
Amen. So as we look at this, we have to understand. So God began to deal with man. And the Bible said that God promised, amen, Abraham that he would make his name great. Amen. And in him, all of the nations of the earth would be blessed. He told Abraham, hallelujah, your seed as it were, it would be great. Praise God. And when we look at this particular parable, we see those seeds, amen, that were bidden at first to come, hallelujah, and be a part, saints, of the marriage that God always wanted. He came to Israel. He spoke to them. He made promise to them. He told them, amen, that hallelujah, you are my firstborn, amen, that you are my bride. Can the church say hallelujah? Amen. And in this parable, it reveals that to us. And as much as God always wanted, amen, to have somebody for himself. But you know how it goes, hallelujah. Whenever man is in, hallelujah, gets into the picture, things, hallelujah, seem, hallelujah, to go out of sorts. But I want you to know God always gets what he wants. Amen. God always gets that which he has desired amen to have and even though man may mess it up I want you to know God had a plan and I want you to know this is I move on the greatest man in your Bible outside of Jesus amen is a man by the name of Abraham because it would be through Abraham that God would accomplish amen his plan for time in as much that he wanted to have hallelujah amen hallelujah a marriage for his son so he took Abraham understanding what Abraham would do amen when the gospel would be preached to him he knew that Abraham would believe him by faith he knew that Abraham hallelujah would establish thank God his natural seed he knew that Abraham hallelujah would establish through faith amen hallelujah a spiritual seed he knew that he would be able to take this man Abraham and birth the greatest individual that has ever lived. Thank God, God's only son, Jesus, amen, which was God in flesh, God revealed. I'm trying to get us to see what God's eternal plan was. Amen, in as much as God always gets what he wants. And so we will see that God began to deal with these individuals. Amen, and he sent unto them time after time again. He spoke his word to them, hallelujah. He sent his servants out to them hallelujah yes he did saints he sent his servants out and he spoke unto them his words amen the heavenly words praise God that came down amen from glory somebody say well pastor why did he sin amen these individuals these servants in this parable amen countless time and time again why did he do that because in God's eternal plan before anything ever thank God came into existence he knew that he wanted to have a marriage he knew that he wanted somebody that would be his just like you want somebody that's yours and yours alone God wanted somebody saints that would love him that my God would worship him that would praise him that would glorify him that would lift him up amen so he established thank God hallelujah a seed and he spoke his word to them hallelujah do you remember what Jesus said when he came and looked at Jerusalem as he gazed upon the city he said Jerusalem Jerusalem the city thank God that murders the prophets hallelujah stones those that are sent to them somebody said why did this happen it was all a part of God's eternal plan he knew what they would do he knew that they would not believe him amen he knew that they would not be worthy he knew that they would not believe his word but I want you to know that did not stop God because God amen will always get what he wants I want you to know God does not play second fiddle to anybody he told Israel if you don't want to be mine if you want to play the harlot with every God under the green tree in the groves if you want to set up things hallelujah that are against my will
will. I'm still going to have a marriage. I'm still give me some more. He said, I'm still going to have somebody that'll love me. I'm still going to have somebody that'll walk with me. Anybody in here want to walk with Jesus? You need to tell yourself, Lord, choose me. Amen. Choose me. Choose me. Amen. If you want to be chosen, hallelujah, you can be chosen. If you want to be one of those, hallelujah, that are God's elect, you can be. But you have to praise God understand you cannot fall by the same example of unbelief in this parable you see this that there were those hallelujah that were bidden to come you see Israel was God's hallelujah he was his first bride he was God's amen firstborn he was they were his chosen they were chosen hallelujah be hallelujah from all the nations Somebody say hallelujah God Why did God choose them You see God does not Choose according Thank God to what we think he ought To choose I want you to know God will take the least of all And then he will take Something that hallelujah really doesn't Amount to anything Hallelujah then he'll begin to work On hallelujah Amen that which was not Anything do you hear what I'm saying You gotta understand Israel was the least of all the nations. Amen. There were a nation of slaves. Hallelujah. But God chose them. He put his love upon them. Oh yes he did. But we see what they did. Hallelujah. Once they rose up and they received him. Amen. They got the big head and begin to think that there's something. So we hear Jeremiah saying because you don't want to believe me hallelujah God said I'm going to write you a bill of divorcement hallelujah they killed Jeremiah they killed Isaiah they killed Hosea they killed Amos amen they killed the prophets slew them thank God with the sword and God said because you don't want to believe my word I'm still going to have a bride I want you to know and even when Jesus came he came to these Israelites. He came primarily to the two tribes, Judah and Benjamin. Hallelujah. And when he came to them, saints, your Bible said in St. John chapter 1, verse 14, he came unto his own, his own received them not. They didn't want to believe him. Hallelujah. So he put Israel away because they played the harlots. Amen. And hallelujah, Judah and Benjamin didn't believe him. Thank God it died in their sin, died in unbelief. And I hear Paul pick it up and say, because you judge yourself unworthy. He said, Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. And all of this is contained in this parable. It is much as God is going to have a bride. And I'm trying, hallelujah, to get somebody to see. Do you want to be a part of the greatest thing that God has got going? Do you want to be a part of the greatest thing that has ever been created? You see, God will have what he wants. Amen. So he sent his only son, his only begotten son. And when he came down here, they didn't believe him. Hallelujah. They hung him on the cross. Hallelujah. They took two, hallelujah, spikes and put it between. Thank God his wrists. Hallelujah. They put two spikes between or spike between his feet they hung him on a cross but I want you to know the Bible tells you and I why was he delivered he was delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God because if God was going to have a bride sister Richardson he had to make sure he came and prepare he had to make sure he came saints and made a way out of no way a way hallelujah that could not be made outside of anybody but himself and I hear Jesus saying when he talked to the Jews he said the father worketh hitherto that I 
my work. What he was saying, saints, the father in creation worked at this point. You didn't believe him when he sent you the prophets, when he sent you those. Amen. To speak my words, you didn't believe him. So God said, you don't believe them. He said, I'll come one last time. I'll come down here. I'll get in a body of flesh. I'll tell you how much I love you. I'll tell you how much I want you. I'll tell you how much, amen, I desire you. I want you to know God loves you. Yes. Oh, yes, God loves the saints. And we got to understand this. I want you to know God will have what he wants. Who wants to be in that plan? Who wants? Thank God to be in that number. Who wants to be? Thank God a part of the greatest thing that God has got going. So you read in this text today as I begin. Thank God to try to wrap this thing up. You read in this text. Amen. That when they would not hear the servants. Amen. That was sent to them. You read in the text. He said I want you to go into the highways. And bid them hallelujah that will hear you to come come in. Now you will notice when he begins this hallelujah. Amen. This parable he says for the kingdom of heaven praise God is like unto this. That has to do with the church as a whole. So when we come into the kingdom of heaven we are preaching praise God the things of God. We are preaching. Amen. We are bidding men to come in. We are trying to explain to them Amen. How do you make sure uh, that you are prepared for the greatest thing that God, uh, amen, ever wanted. You see, uh, if you are going to be prepared for where God wants you to go, uh, there's some preparations that you gotta take. Uh, you see, you can't get to where you need to go on your own. Uh, I want you to hear what I'm saying if you're trying to go, uh, amen, from here to California. Uh, you don't put shoes on your feet and get to walking. Uh, amen but what you do you take praise God uh, amen some type of praise God thing that you can use uh, that will get you there in an expedient fashion uh, amen you get in a car and you drive down the road uh, you get on a bird and you fly there uh, I want you to know you can't get to where God wants you to be by yourself uh, you need God to get you to where he wants you to be uh, all, all of us need need God to lead us we 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 need God to guide us we need God Hallelujah. We need God to make us into what he wants us to be. You see, the journey is long. Praise God, the road is tedious. But I want you to know when you got the right thing going with you, you'll get exactly to where God wants you to get to. Oh, yes. Amen. So these Jews didn't believe saints. But I want you to know God still had a plan. He still had a plan to get what he wanted. He still had a plan to get his church. Amen. So he said, y'all don't believe. I'm going to send other servants to go out and get somebody that will furnish themselves. That'll be ready when I come. Do you hear what I'm saying? All of this is contained in this text because God will have His chosen. It's like you don't settle for what you don't want. God is not gonna settle for what He don't want. If God wanted, He'll get it. If God wanted, it's already done. And I don't know about nobody in here. But I want to be what God wants me to be. I want to be ready when he comes. I want to be ready. I want to be ready when he comes. I want him to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. He says, enter into the joy of the Lord. I want God to say, you've done everything that I've called you to do. You have made yourself ready. Oh, yes. So they went out, praise God, and bid them to come in. I want you to know he called them. They didn't believe. So he said, now I'm going to get, praise God, what I always wanted. I'm going to get somebody that loves me. I'm going to get somebody 
They don't hear, thank God, my words. Uh, amen. He went out into the highways and called those uh, that were originally called to the marriage. Uh, you got to understand you and I were locked out of the church. Uh, we were not called into this circle of life. Uh, but I want you to know God in his foreknowledge knew uh, that he always wanted to have uh, somebody that loved him, somebody, uh, amen, that will do his will so he called the Gentiles. Uh, he called us from a long ways off. Uh, the Bible said we were far off. Uh, we were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. Uh, we did not know him. We did not have him. Uh, but I want you to know once Jesus came uh, and they died in unbelief, uh, then he took upon himself a Gentile bride uh, to the point the church today, saints, uh, is almost a home Gentile church. Uh, somebody say, why did he do it? Uh, he did it because he's going to have what he wants. Uh, he did it because God always gets what he desires. He called us in, hallelujah, from a long ways off. Many of us were not even looking for God. But I want you to know God was looking for you. When you were not thinking about God, God was thinking about you. When you were not trying to get to him, he was trying to get to you. I got to slow down. And so... As I begin to try to wrap this little thing up. And so in this, saints, it's revealed what God always desired. Amen. Is that he would have, praise God, a marriage for his son. Inasmuch as he was the king, he came as the son. Why did he come as the son? So he could prepare, praise God, the sons that would be a part of his bride. You see, God can move from one place to another. I mean, God is multifaceted. Can the church shout hallelujah? Amen. God does things, saints, that go beyond our ability to explain. Amen. And in this parable, saints, he's calling somebody. Amen. Bidding them praise God to get their garments on. Amen. To make sure, thank God, that they are making themselves ready. Thank God for when he comes back, can the church shout hallelujah. Amen. Here it lies, hallelujah, God's eternal plan. Thank God that he would have a chosen, a beloved. Hallelujah, somebody that was only his, that was not given to anybody else. And I want you to know when you come to a marriage, saints, you are coming to a place of somebody that has come together in kinship and in union they are now one. Did not the Bible say these two shall be one? And if you're going to be one with God, you got to take on everything that he wants you to take on. You can't take on part of him and not take on the other part of him. You got to have him lock, stock, and barrel. And I want you to know if you're going to make it into this marriage, you got to have your garments on. You know what those garments are, saints. It is the righteousness of the saints. Oh, we clothe in his righteousness. I want you to know I'm trying to make sure that I do everything I can. That when he calls me, I'll be clothed like he wants me to be clothed. I have everything he wants me to have on. So he tells them, as I begin to close, he tells them, make sure, as it were, that when you come in, you have your garments on. Even when we, from a natural sense, perform marriages, we tell people what the dress code is. We tell them that if you're going to come into this marriage, you are going to make, you are going to have to have the proper attire. Can the church say amen? amen? As I begin to close this little message this morning, I want us to understand that God, saints, amen, is revealing to us what he always wanted. He's showing us in this parable, thank God, that he always wanted somebody for himself. 
He always wanted somebody that would have him as their God. But when you look around today, there are people, thank God, they want to play as Israel played the harlot. They want to have what they want to have. And what they don't want to have, amen, they want to discard. Israel played that game, praise God, and as it were, as a whole, their, uh, their ability to be the bride was given to somebody else. Amen. And I want you to know, I don't want to play that game with God. Hallelujah. I don't want God to tell me because you played games with me so long. Amen. I'm no longer going to take you as my bride. But I want you to know we all have to make up in our mind, Lord, please, if you do anything, please choose me. If you're going to have anybody into earth, please Please get me. Let me be one of those. Hallelujah. That will be a part of the marriage. Some of the lamb. Hallelujah. Let me be one of those that have made my garments. Have dipped them in your blood. Hallelujah. And you have covered me from head to toe. Don't play the game. Because if you play the game, you'll get burnt. Herein lies the greatest revelation of the ages. In these 14 verses, the greatest revelation of the ages was that God wanted to have a bride. And everything you see in the world right now, Elder, is all because of that purpose. That's the only purpose why the earth revolves or the sun revolves around the earth. The earth spins on its axis. The sun comes out of its chambers like a bridegroom elder or a bride or groom coming out of his chambers because God wanted a church. Because God wanted a bride. And I want you to know God always gets what he wants. God doesn't part way get what he wants. He, get, he gets what he wants and he only takes that which he has desired. Can the church say amen? The culmination of this, this particular parable will take place in the 19th chapter of the book of Genesis, the book of Revelation, excuse me, where when he gets all the groups, his bride is in heaven, the glorified church, those that were bidden to come to the marriage supper of the Lamb are pulled out of Revelation. The four groups that come up stand on the sea of glass. When they all get there, God is going to perform the greatest ceremony that has ever been performed when he gets what he wants. Can the church say amen? He takes his palm bearers. They're caught up. 144,000 are caught up. The two witnesses are caught up. A number which those that will be headed for the witness of Christ are caught up. And God at the end performs this ceremony that you see here in a story that he gave to us. Who wants to be chosen? Who wants to make it? Who wants to go? You got to tell yourself, Lord, choose me. Because I want you to know, he's doing the choosing. We are simply yielding to him and allowing him to do what he wants as we submit to his will. Can the church say amen? I want to be, Sister Garner, one of those. I want to make it. Can the church say hallelujah? hallelujah? I didn't get a chance to say it the way I wanted to say it today, but by the same token. This is God's plan. Can the church say hallelujah? hallelujah? This is his plan. That he would have a church. He would have a bride. And let me give you this tidbit of information as we close. Not only will he have his bride, he will also have his children on earth. He will establish and he's going to plant the heavens. He's going to, the earth will be populated. 
Therefore, fulfilling what he told us in the book of Ephesians, that the whole family of heaven and earth will be named in him. Just like you want a bride, you want a family, so does God. And if we are going to be a part of that family, if we are going to be a part of those, we have to make ourselves ready. Right. Seventh verse of the 19th chapter of the book of Revelation says, The bride has made herself ready. Yes, we have to partner with God. We got to partner with him. He's already showed his love, his concern for all of us. He's already let us know that I chose the church in myself. But we make the choice whether or not we are going to be a part of what he has predetermined and predestinated in his foreknowledge to take place. This, what you're reading right here is the foreknowledge of God. What he planned to do and what has already, as it were, in, as far as he is concerned, has taken place. Because God speaks those things that are not as though they are. Amen. So as far as God is, took it, God is concerned, what he planned to do has already happened. We are just waiting to catch up with what he planned to do. But isn't that just like God, how he lets you know what he's planning to do before you get there? You see, God don't want you to get caught off guard. He don't want you to be in the blind and wonder what happened. How did, this all, how did all this come about? So he gives us his word. He gives us his foreknowledge, written aforetime. The things in his word, what he planned to do. And says, all you got to do is get ready. You already got the plan. You already got the example. Can the church say amen? amen. Everything has been set. And all I'm telling everybody today, you better choose him. If you're going to be, if he's going to choose you. Can the church say amen? Who wants to be a part of this? Come on. I'm done today. I preach long enough. Who, who is tired, sick and tired of being sick and tired? Praise the Lord. There comes a time even when we're planning our own marriages. And you are getting the guests together. You're getting your, how can I say it? You're getting your bridesmaids. Brother's getting his, the groomsmen together. It comes a time when you just say, when is the marriage going to take place? You hear what I'm telling you? You just get tired of all the planning. You just ready for the celebration. Who's ready for the celebration? I'm ready for it. You see, we got to wear this world as a loose garment. We can't be worrying about what we're doing down here. Because what we're doing down here really don't fit into God's eternal plan. If we're doing it for ourselves. Can the church say amen? Who wants to be a part of that bride today? Tell yourself, Lord, choose me. Can the church say amen? Sometimes if, you, if you're going to, when you want to be looked at, you got to get around some people. You got to move some stuff out the way. If you're trying to get somebody to look at you, you sisters know what I'm talking about. I ain't going to say that. You're trying to get somebody's attention, you got a way of getting their attention. Hello? If you're trying to get God's attention, let him know you want his attention. Because you want to be a part of his bride. Who wants to be saved today? Come on. Who wants to be in that number? Who wants to be in the marriage? Can the church say hallelujah? I want to be in the marriage. The marriage supper of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Come on today, right now. Come on. We'll baptize you today. In the name of Jesus. We'll baptize you today. In the name of Jesus, God will fill your soul with the Holy Ghost. And then he'll begin to prepare you for the marriage. Can the church say amen? He'll begin to allow you to put the garments on that you have to have. Get things in order in your life. Can the church say hallelujah? So that you can be ready when he comes. You notice in the parable, those that did not have a marriage garment, garment he was speechless. I, 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 I let you know everything that needed to be done. Did he do that? He sent servants to tell them 
what to, what to do. Isn't that right? There's service right now that is telling us what we need to do, how to get prepared, how to be ready, so that when he comes, we can say, Lord, I got it on. Praise the Lord. Bishop, I got it on. Look, can the church say hallelujah? I got on, as he said in the, in the book of Revelation, I got on my garments clean and white, which is the righteousness of what? The saints. Can the church say amen? You got to put off your garments and put on his garments. That suit we wear today ain't going to cut it. Praise the Lord. I got to have his righteousness and his righteousness alone. Who wants it today? I'm going to get out your way. Come on. Are you Come on today.